All right, everybody, welcome back to the TV show. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Punish the Sinners by John Saul. This is the second book that John Saul ever wrote. Um, maybe you saw my review of the first ever book that he wrote. Um, can't remember the name of that one. Uh, Suffer the Children. That's what it was. It was a good book. It was a good review. And now, what do I think of book number two? I'm reading and reviewing every John Saul book in order of publication on the channel. Same with Stephen King. We're about book number 62 with Stephen King. We're only at about number two with John Saul. Anyway, this thing came out in 1978. And surprise, surprise, it was actually taking place. The story actually takes place in 1978. Unlike... Uh, Suffer the Children, which I was hoping would be a 1970s horror novel, ended up being a 1960s horror novel because it was set in the 60s, written in the 70s, set in the 60s. This one was written in the 70s, actually set in 1978. So, thumbs up! I'm getting what I'm wanting. Until we look at the cover. Oh, good God almighty. This might be my least favorite cover of any book in my Massive 5,000 volume library of books. You know I, not, I don't like to say negative things on this channel. But I don't like this cover one single bit. That's all I'm going to say. All I'm going to say. That being said, I opened up this and three pages in, without a doubt, the most unexpected and most shocking opening scene I've ever read in a book. I wasn't expecting it because I kind of thought his first, John Saul's first novel, uh, Suffer the Children, was um, a little bit of a PG-13 rated, R it wasn't even R-rated horror. This, oh my gosh, this book. And I don't want to even spoil the opening scene for you, just so in case you want to read it yourself, you will, you can be shocked all of your own. It went in a direction that I was not expecting right from the get-go, but absolutely brilliant. Hard, hard, hard R-rated horror novel opening scene. Thumbs up. Absolute thumbs up. Loved it. And then we get into a lot of pagan witchcraft stuff. That's why I wore my Stonehenge t-shirt. Because that is a place full of pagan witchcraftery. I've been there. I loved Stonehenge. Actually, I bought this at the Stonehenge gift shop. Um, it's a cool place. Again, there's places on the planet that I wasn't expecting to be as cool as they were. Stonehenge is one of them. You see the pictures, you're just like, eh, it's some rocks. But when you walk up onto it, there's a magical feel to it, and a grandeur, a grandeur, a grand it's just way more super cool than you could have expected it to be. Rather than me trying to use highfalutin words to describe Stonehenge, just know that it's fucking dope. All right. Suffer the children. After one of the best opening scenes I've ever read in a book that got me super jazzed, we get to know a a, a dude named Peter Balsam, who is a new teacher in Neesville, in Neil, it's Neilsville, it's N-I-E-L, so that's Neilsville, Neilsville, wherever in the United States, I, th I don't think the state is mentioned, Xavier High School, Neilsville, 1978, he's a new teacher, and he uh, is in this school, and he starts to realize that a lot of the teenage girls are acting differently than teenage girls usually behave. In fact, they're acting kind of like, well, they're suicidal. Let's just say it. Let's just say it. They're suicidal. Something's going on. And we keep getting a lot of information. And this is, this is the one horror, one of the only horror novels that almost read as if it was like 
the Da Vinci Code plus a horror novel? Or like one of those Steve Barry Cotton Malone or James Rollins sort of we're going to explore the Illuminati type of thrillers, but then add like a big bunch of horror elements to it. That's really what this was. Despite the f***ed up cover that says nothing about anything that's going on in the story, this should have... I mean, there are so many things going on in this awesome book that the cover could have been dynamite. I can just think of a zillion, trillion images in my head right at this moment that would be better than this pile of shit god anyway we talk about the um we 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 we, we go back in time a little bit with a lot of our discussions that happen in this book um a new teacher a lot of the girls at the school are suicidal. There seems to be some sort of pagan witchcraft stuff floating around. We go back to the priests that would flagellate themselves. You know, if you've seen that scene in the Da Vinci Code. Well, there's a priest at Xavier High School here that does that. He, there's also a science... They, they've also got this uh, great metaphor of these... Because the girls are losing control of themselves. And in class, they're learning about rats that walk through mazes and how you can fuck with the rats if you just change a few things in the maze. And it's a great metaphor for what's going on in the book where the characters are sort of trapped in this maze of just dark magic that stems from the Dominicans, the flagellation, the um, Xavier, the Saint Xavier, Saint Francis Xavier and of the Portugal Inquisitions of 1252 when, um, you know, the Inquisition was, you know, hey, if you ain't Catholic, we're going to kill you in brutal ways. And we've got a Catholic high school here and um, things are going down in brutal ways. And it's full of a lot of great teenage characters from the 70s. Like if you love Stranger Things and you love high school based horror novels with young characters, coming of age characters, a teacher that's trying to figure out what's going wrong, and a surprise ending. Where? Gosh, this might even be a spoiler if I say that, but um, do the good guys always win in horror novels? Do they always escape or not? I mean, it was just an unexpected ending that happened in here. I mean, it's not all uh, peaches and cream you know, at the end of, you know, not every pagan witchcraft disembowelment novel ends in everybody, you know, sitting around eating uh, cupcakes. They, they don't. They don't. This is a massive step up for me with John Saul. I liked this second book way more than the first book. And I liked the first book pretty good if you saw that review. So I'm giving the uh, punish... The Sinners, I don't even know if I even mentioned the uh, title yet. If I didn't, apologize. Punish the Sinners, I am going to give this a 9 out of 10. It was super good. I actually really liked it.